Beautiful. So let's recognize that it's a beautiful, beautiful performance. Zach is a very remarkable cellist. He's 16 years old. He goes to school in Philadelphia. And once a week, he gets in a car with his parents and drives six hours to come to Boston to play in the Boston Philharmonic Youth Orchestra. And then he f goes back to Philadelphia at the end of the rehearsal. <laughs> so wherever you come from, and these three come from Connecticut, and they come from Lexington and so on, nothing compares to what Zach does. <laughs> he comes all the way, such a long way, for which he is to be greatly commended. Something occurred to me. I've just been auditioning about 200 people for the Youth Philharmonic Orchestra and an enormous number of cellists, it's a frightening number of cellists. And all of them had to play the slow movement of the Brahms Second Symphony, the, this, the melody from the Brahms Second Symphony. And I thought, why not take some moments to look at that solo, which every cellist has to prepare for their auditions, and see whether there's anything we can do to make sense of it, to make it, more beautiful, and, and so I invited Zach to be a guinea pig, as it were, to look at the Brahms. Should we do that? Now, the, the thing that the audition panel or the, uh, the auditioning committee are listening for is intonation, which you're very good at, uh, beautiful sound, which you're very good at, and following the dynamics. Those are the main things. And Based on that, I think you would do a very good audition and you would be highly uh, commended and no doubt get into the orchestra that you were applying for. And the question is, is that all there is? Now, the first question is, the first note, is it a downbeat or is it an upbeat? It begin, it's the highest note in the phrase. So if you were to sing it, right? It sounds as though it's a downbeat, in which case it would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But that's not what Brahms wrote. What he wrote was tired, because the F sharp is on the upbeat of the previous bar. So how are you going to suggest that? You have a bowing which you inherited from the score, which is which makes the third note the heavy one. And I heard it maybe 30 times over the last days, and everybody went da, 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 da. But that's not what Brahms wrote, right? So the first question is, do you have to follow the bowings that somebody put into your part? The answer is no. All right, so now what bowing should we do in order to get da, 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 da. You could start with an upper, which would be very dramatic. Let's try that. Now, Brahms wrote a slur over the whole thing. So at the moment, what we're hearing is da, da, and that sounds too separate. So one thing you could do with an orchestra is have everybody do a different bowing. And in the old days, they used to do that. They didn't worry about bowings. And how do we know that? Because in those days, the parts from which they play, which exist still, have no bowings in them. Isn't that interesting? All the modern parts have bowings, but in Beethoven's time, there's not a single bowing. Isn't that interesting? So everybody did whatever they felt like. So you could create the illusion of making it one bow by playing Try that. Right. When I was a cello teacher many, many, many years ago, I had a student who was eight. 
and he uh, played the cello very nicely and one day we were working and he said why does the bow go up and down because music goes round and round why don't you have a bow that goes round the back he said and I thought, what a wonderful idea. I've been looking all these years for a bow that goes around the back. So could you create that illusion? And I don't care what bow you use. Now we're still getting da 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 da. But it was pretty good. And when you have a whole lot of cellos, we could probably make it even more legato. Now the first phrase, ta da di da da ta di da 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 Then they match each other, right? So me, the first one asks a question, and the second one gives the answer. Two, three. Beautiful, was that gorgeous? It's gorgeous. And what's beautiful about that is you say these two phrases belong together and they don't belong with what happens. They're completely separate. Now, poco forte is the marking, which is not piano. Poco forte is small forte, in other words, less than forte. So can you get a little bit more, a little bit more intensity in the left hand? One thing I wouldn't do is da 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 because that's an end, isn't it? Da di di da da. Left hand. Now that's very awkward to end on a down bow. Isn't that awkward? Brahms left us a very difficult task. He just wrote a slur. So I wonder whether we shouldn't go back to So use more bow, but make it very legato. Let's try that. The only thing I would disagree with is the glissando you make between the two phrases. Da, 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 da. A breath, take a breath, and ta di da, da, da. two, three. Now, that was very beautifully done. I don't care what bowing you use in the audition, right? The conductor will decide, but that brings the phrase very beautifully to life. Now, ta -da -di, go from there. Right. Now, that phrase is a very simple idea, and you're playing da 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 da. Nobody wrote music like that, right? So, da 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 Look how it's phrased. One line. Just try that. Right. Can you avoid da 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 di rather just play this da 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 Do it again. Three. And now add a note. 
Good. You did that slightly slower than when you did. I'll try it. Yeah, it's still noty, and I don't think Brahms like noty. He like uh, lined. Just try that. Good. Now that phrase ends. Right, completely. And now So do from there. Right? Good. So that was beautiful. Da di da dum, pa di. Da di da dum, pa di. Isn't that beautiful? It's like an arabesque in dancing. Da di da dum, pa. Just do from there. Da di da da. Yeah, that's a little stuck. Da di da di. Look, it's all in one slur. Da di da dum. It goes to F. To e, now, what we may discover is that it's a little too slow because he marks it adagio manon troppo, right? So I think he may want it a little faster. I'm just Aha, uh -huh, now we're talking. Now it's it's taking flight, okay? We call that one buttock playing. <laughs> Try once again. <laughs> Can I suggest you use the rest? <laughs> Good, now more. Now wait, that phrase ends. It falls to there. And then it goes again to there. So just through those phrases. Yeah, not too much bow change. Right, because look, bless Brahms, he writes a slur, da, 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 de, da, da, all the way to there, and then another bow goes there. Right? If you could do it round the back, da, de, da, de, da, da, try that three. Good. And we finish now. More. More. Yes, good, bravo, bravo, wonderful. You see, that what's so fantastic? Da 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 now now it doesn't stop it goes and goes and goes because every phrase has been Ending, 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 and now suddenly this last one takes flight. So should we try that?
see it. Now we're starting. Isn't that that's something? Can we try from the beginning? And I'll help you a little, all right? Wow. That's exciting. Here we go. Two, three. Now, I've heard maybe 30 performances of that in the last few weeks, and none of them played like that. Because they, they were focused on the sound, on the intonation, on the rhythm, and on the dynamics. Those are very, very important things. But that's just the beginning. That's only the beginning. Those are the elements. But the music is something completely different. For that, we have to know which notes belong to which. This is the crucial thing in music. You have to know which note belongs to what. What belongs to what. And I'll tell you a very funny story. When I was little, we used to sing Christmas carols. Do you know the Christmas carol? Good king, when sirs last oh God. You remember that one? Well, I thought that this was a song about a king called Wences. Good king, Wences. And the last time he looked out, was on the Feast of Stephen. The window was very high, I imagined, and he had to go down in the basement and to get the ladder to climb up. And the last time he made this big effort was on the Feast of St. Stephen. So I thought it was Good King Wences' last look out. But actually, the name of the gentleman was Good King Wenceslas. And he looked out every day. <laughs> Perfectly normal thing. <laughs> so what really matters is where does Lass belong? Is it Good King Wenceslas? Or is it good King Wences last look out? <laughs> you get that? So the question, what belongs to what, is one of the essential questions that a musician has to ask about every single note. Now, that first note, virtually everybody thinks that it's a downbeat. Or they bow it with two up bows. But that doesn't work because Brahms was fascinated by ambiguity. He took the highest note and made it an upbeat. He took the highest note, the strongest note, and made it the weakest beat in the bar, which creates a tension, which you have to bring out in the music. Right? Then when he's that B sharp has to be resolved. And you can take as much time as you want there. Now, and the less da 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 because nobody's interested in the individual note. They're interested da 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 So da 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 one buttock da 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 finish. And now to F to the and now it goes to the... And now something completely different. Again, they're parallel, aren't they? And now... 
and now it goes. And it wants to urge itself forward and finally, finally, finally it reaches its goal. All right, so should we try from the beginning? Here we go. No. No. <laughs> Yeah, very interesting. Do you notice the bowing? He does a different bow on every side. I don't care what bowing you do. What I care is that you feel the tragedy of tall, heavy, heavy. In other words, the upbeat is a heavy beat. Tall, I would do slower, slower them. Yes. Finish. Yeah. Can you get over da da da? That always dies there. Yeah, it's slow. Let me see, tell you how it's written. It's just written with a slur and dots. And that in Brahms means, in many composers, Schubert too, that means. Portato, which means the closest thing you can get to legato, but slight separation. Good. If you can make toddy, that's heavy. Heavy toddy, then it's light. Yes, beautiful. Was that beautiful? Beautiful. A little applause, please. That was so beautiful. Then I get the tragedy. Feel the tragedy. Finish. Now floating. Yeah, stay, that's stuck. Think this. Think of the E and then for lengthen it. If you lengthen the E, it'll make it feel like a heavy beat. You can make a beat, a, an impulse, two ways, either by making more sound or by making more length. And the Germans call that an agogic accent. Agogic, agogic accent. Means by lengthening the note, you say, this is the main beat, and now I'm gonna fall away. From there, second theme. <laughs> no, you're absolutely even. That's it. All right, got it? Once again. Heartbroken. Can you, can you feel heartbroken? You're playing the cello very well, but I don't feel oh, oh, a cry of pain. Two, three, four. Do you notice in order to get that, it, he immediately went on one buttock to do that, right? That's how you do that. It's very simple. You want to be tragic, you go on one buttock. Very simple, right? Two, three. Now you're going to float. more. I want to say, I want to say, this lady, she went, yes, like that. She went, yes. <laughs> it was great. Because it was so beautiful. So beautiful. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Do once again from, I do. Yes, yes, 
ellas me Beautiful. Bravo. Bravo. Now, here's an interesting question. Here's a very interesting question. If you played that way in an audi traditional audition, what would the jury say? They'd say, but that's not the way it's usually played. You shouldn't do that. It's too musical. It's too interesting. It's too exciting. We don't want that. We just want intonation, good sound, rhythm, and dynamics. That's all we want. Everything else is useless. I say, poppycock. <laughs> Every time you play a, a phrase of Brahms, you have to give everything that that phrase calls for. And that's what you just did. Now, it's dangerous to play that way because nobody else is playing that way. The 30 cellists who play, not one person even tried, including you. So now, am I going to advise you to do that? Yes. <laughs> Because if the orchestra you're auditioning for doesn't like that kind of playing, you don't want to play in that orchestra. Well, that's going a little far because they may pay you very well. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a dilemma because the way that these pieces are played traditionally is not the way I think that Brahms indicated it to be played. Isn't that exciting? So now what are you going to do next time you're going to play that phrase? play with heartbreak and with love and with arabesque and with all these different moods. It's amazing. It's one of the greatest themes ever written. Beautiful. Well done. Thank you. <laughs>